You're listening to Opinions of Beer. I prefer mead. You sent me to hell, Jason. I really just want to make everybody jealous. <laughs> I'm a person from Earth. Listen, what are we talking about? I reckon it sounds like opinions and beer. You're the smartest dumb guys I've ever met. <laughs> And welcome to Opinions and Beer. Well, actually, you probably know it already because of our intro. It says it, it says it quite, quite a many times. A many quite of times. It says Opinions and Beer, which is the show you're listening to right now. And boy, do we've got some opinions for you today. Or do we? Or do we got speculations for you today? Or do we got beer for you today? Today, Eamon could not be with us, uh, but I am joined by EdRay1416. Yo. In replace of Eamon, we do have a wine review that EdRay will be sharing with... Should you do the wine review first and get it out and just like... Or should you do it after? I have a plug. I have a plug to do in a second for a, uh, another podcast. Um... Go ahead and just say what the wine is that you'll be drinking today. Okay, so today's wine today for the episode is Barefoot Chardonnay of California. And this is a white wine. This is the first time I've ever reviewed a white wine here on Opinions and Beer. And let's go ahead and read this for uh, everybody watching. Barefoot Chardonnay is a delightful wine with tempting flavors of green apples and peaches. Hints of honey and vanilla enhance the buttery finish. So that's kind of interesting to hear about uh, this product. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and sniff this. Well, I can detect a very sweet hint of what this white wine is about. And like I said, I never tried white wine before, so I'm going to go ahead and take a sip of this. Well, I will say it's very strong, not as sweet as uh, other white wines are. And of course, I have more of a taste for red wine, so I guess the blame goes on me, but... Overall, I'm going to give this a, uh, let's say a 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10? But do you think this, uh, do you think this wine would get you trashed? Uh, probably not. Like, probably not like, uh... It won't get you trashed? Probably not like, uh, Car Cabernet Sauvignon, because that one's very strong, but it has a sweet, uh, sweet taste to it. Man, Edra, don't you like getting... Getting a bit tipsy, or maybe even trashed, and talking talking opinions. Well, sometimes depends on the quality. Well, you know, we're not the only drinking type podcast out there. Did you know that, Ed Ray? No. What do you got in mind? Well, if you like us, and if you wish you heard more of us, but not us, and you needed more, if you needed more podcast content to listen to. Boy, we do. We've got the newer show for you. Now we're not. We don't really do uh, sports and stuff. So this other this other show, they 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 incorporate. Uh, I, I believe they incorporate basketball and other sports into their discussions. And we don't really talk sports on the Opinions and Beer podcast. But on the Trashed Talk podcast is a show that covers movies, comics, TV shows, and games, all while having a drink. Each week, they, ex they examine a new topic, be it a new movie or show, or a series of themed movies, and review it. And at the end of the show, they introduce the comic and game of the week, and wrap up with a drunken debate. Check Trash Talk Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher at Trash Talk Podcast. Boy, does that sound interesting. Yeah, for every sports enthusiast out there, check it out. Well, they have they have sports themed episodes, but they 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 have a lot of a lot of what we cover. You know, they they talk about a lot of similar stuff to us, so they, I feel like it's a very good good pairing to mention them. And that apparently, we may have them on in a they may have us on in a crossover episode where we do uh, possibly a movie bracket, a specific movie bracket, and we will debate uh, and figure out. Either the best or worst. I haven't decided. We haven't really decided what it is. Either the best or the worst of that type of movie uh, bracket. Does that sound exciting to you, Ed Ray? As exciting as it'll ever be. We gotta let Eamon know so Eamon can be prepared whenever Eamon uh, comes back on the show. Yeah, get over here, Eamon. 
Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Uh, so you heard wine, you heard our plug, but this is this is opinions and beer. And today's beer of the day is Lagunitas' Cappuccino Stout. It is a 9.1% by volume. It is has an IBU of 29.5. It's a, it's their limited release. It is brewed by the Lagunitas Brewing Company in Petula, California, and Chicago, Illinois. I guess they're saying that, but they have a brewery in both locations. I, I you know, I, I like Lagunitas. I think Lagunitas. I think it was Lagunitas that was. Um, it was the brewery that sponsored Boba Flex, and so, uh, and so I. But I've always, I've always liked Lagunitas. I've had uh, some of their other. Other beer undercover, their undercover L, undercover IPA or stout. I don't know what it was, but it was a good one. Their undercover beer. But um, I'm gonna pour this beer right here on my sampler glass. It pours a, a it pours really dark. It's a really dark beer. Uh, it's a, a, a semi decent head, but that might be my glass. My glasses. How do you clean a beer glass properly? You know, do you have to get like special? I don't know. I know that I know if you don't clean it properly, then the um, the head it won't it won't um, it won't foam up uh, properly. It won't foam up like it's supposed to. And so uh, I never know if it's my glasses or the way I'm pouring it or if it's the beer. <laughs> but uh, but it's a decent little little head right here. But I do have a sample glass, so it's not like it's a full pour. This is actually a bigger bottle. This is coming in a um, uh, a pint, a pint. Yeah, it's a pint, a pint bottle. It's a bit, it's a little bigger. It's it's a bit bigger than the um the a standard standard can or glass. I'm gonna smell this beer. Um, I'm getting I'm getting little hints of a. Uh, of coffee at the initial smell. Um, but it's very faint. I don't know if that's my sniffer or if it's just faint. But I've, I had I've had coffee uh, flavored beers though that have been really powerful with their coffee smell. And this one, this this smell is just kind of a uh, kind of weak. I don't know how old this beer is, but stouts shouldn't go bad. They age so. So we're gonna try this beer. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, that second sip was really good. First, first sip was a kind of like it was it was pretty standard. Second, second sip, I get a little bit more hops. It's like it's like it's kind of like a hoppier cappuccino style, which is weird because we just had Rev and Rev was like a it's like a three hundred IBUs and this thing is at twenty nine. Uh, <laughs> and I can taste the, uh, I can taste the hop. It's like the hop burst. It's like a hop, hop bomb. It's like a hop bomb that I taste. So I don't, maybe that's that coffee flavor is strong or something. Cappuccino. Ed Ray, how do you, what's the difference between a cappuccino and a regular coffee? Well, regular coffee is black, and cappuccino has some uh, extra kind of flavors in there. I'm not a coffee expert, but that's what I saw. Really? I don't see nothing about this. What's it say? Up until the summer of 2010, we'd always had a little, a little ditty on the side here that was a peon to a good old hot cup of joe. It was built on the bones of the 23rd... Uh, saw him and went something like, Coffee is my shepherd. I shall not. But that was where the trouble started. Turns out, talking about the coffees, <laughs> Happy Side on L label is uh, America. <laughs> it's America. But yeah. Anyways, it's a it's a decent coffee. It's a it's a pretty decent coffee beer. Uh, I don't know. It's really good. At nine percent, you don't taste the alcohol. That's what I, I, that's what I kind of like about these, all these darker coffee beers. Like the coffee taste 
really masks alcohol in the uh, in the higher gravity beers. I um. I'm going to give it a, a seven, eight, a seven. I'm biased, man. That's why I like Eamon to be here. I wish Eamon was here to tell me what he's, what he's tasting in this. But, um, I think I'm going to give it an eight. I'm going to give it an eight after thinking about it. It's a, our seven. That aftertaste isn't that great. 7.5. I give Lagunitas Cappuccino Stout a 7, seven good coffees out of 10. <laughs> 7 good coffees out of 10. Ugh. It's pretty good. I love these. I love coffee beers. I love coffee beers, Ed Ray. What's, what's a flavor that you enjoy? Oh, like one of those red beer flavors that uh, Johnny Max had on the show that was actually a sweet beer. Oh, yeah, yeah, that uh, Frambois. The Frambois was really good. What what kind of beer do you think would be in a, um, like, a, what, like a Nintendo world? Or Mario. What kind of beer do you think? Do you think Mario's drinking beer or is he drinking wine? Well, I've never seen Italians drink beer before, but they're usually wine connoisseurs. You think? What what you You know uh did you see that they're making a um a Rugrats uh live action? Or no, I, well, it's it's half. Apparently the babies are going to be CGI and the adults are going to be live action. Well, whoever came up with that idea is uh pretty messed up. Pretty messed up. Pretty messed up. What's up with all these live action stuff that they're doing? Oh, it's simple. These companies are milking the crap out of their old franchises because they got no originality. <laughs> no originality. But you know, when people do have originality, they get shat on, don't they? Well, that's unfortunately the culture for us in 2019. What do you think about... Because, I mean, think about... Um, speaking of uh, Mario, Italians, what, ha what about when Mario movie was made? And they took a lot of creativity didn't they they did their own little stuff well they had multiple directors and poor writing but it's not just that i mean how do you make a backstory out of a game that didn't have a backstory to begin with i guess what what uh if you could did you like the mario movie is that what you're trying to tell me oh i think it was good you know bob hoskins and dennis hopper's performances were extremely good oh but how come everyone hated it well, it's because of the general story. I mean, the story didn't make sense. And didn't you think all the uh, the Koopas and stuff are weird looking? Well, yeah. I mean, they're not. How do you make a Goomba in real life? <laughs> well, they could. Hey, you know what? Uh, the Pokemon movie made Pokemon in real life, and they were like CGI. You could do like a CGI world. How would you? If you were to make a Mario movie or a Mario backstory, what would you do? Well, how about figure out the origins of the Mario Brothers, how they became plumbers, and what got them into this, uh, what got them into this mess where, uh, they end up in another dimension and have to save a princess from a castle. <laughs> Do they, is that, is that their, um, story? Well. Do they end up well, in another dimension or do they live in that world? I don't know. I mean, they're supposed to be Italian plumbers from Brooklyn. Well, where's Mario World? That's something I'd like to know. So, maybe, maybe, maybe that's just their normal world. Maybe they're in Brooklyn. They're in Brooklyn, yet they're running around in castles. I yeah, didn't know there it, were could castles. Be a, it, it could be a weird world. Yeah, this is exactly where Shigeru, Shigeru Miyamoto should have elaborated what the story was about. What if... What if, um... Man, what do you think, uh, what was good about the, I don't know what to say, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of my words, um, are you a, um, was it, was Bowser in it? Bowser was in that old movie? 
Well, Dennis Hopper played Bowser. Bowser was a human being with uh, dreadlocks. You know, he went from a human being with dreadlocks and then he, evo he evolved into an actual uh, dinosaur toward the end before the obvious happened. What? Okay, so here's my pitch. I'm going to pitch the Mario movie. And let's, let's, let's make a Mario movie in this episode, Ed Ray. You ready? Let's go. Okay. Wait one second. Are the Mar Mario brothers... Is, Lu is, Lu is Luigi's last name Mario? What's Mario's first name? Mario. His name's Mario. Is it? Nuh-uh. His name's Mario Mario? Yeah, according to the movie it was. It is Mario Mario? Maybe I haven't watched the movie in a long time. I've been thinking, <laughs> it's Mario, Mario. My name's Mario, 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 Mario. Who does that? <laughs> Who does that? Damn Italians. But uh, <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. I'm like the Mario Brothers. That has to be their last name. So, it's, so Luigi's name is Luigi Mario. But anyways, here's it is. Here's my pitch. The movie opens, and it's it kind of shows the world. And I want to say it's a blended world. Where, like, Goombas are real life, but they're, like, maybe they're CG, like, like the Pokemon movie. Where, like, Goombas and all this stuff are, like, actual creatures in the real world. And, um, and Mario is a plumber. And there's a, and he, but he's running the business by himself at the moment. And he goes down into the sewer. And there's, like, this weird scaffolding down there. And he's, but because he's sitting down there. Uh, because he's like he's not he's not he's like not just a plumber. Maybe he's like a um, like a specialty. He he does other stuff, for whatever reason. He, he's like a. In this world, plumbers mean something else. Like, almost like half-ass heroes, maybe, or uh, or they they do they have extra skills, they have extra jobs and stuff. They do a roundabout work of stuff. So Mario goes down into the sewer, and there's like this scaffolding, and up in the top of the scaffolding, is an ape it's a gorilla and <laughs> and so mario his he has to try to get the gorilla out of the scaffolding and so he's trying to climb up the scaffolding and the gorilla starts throwing crates at him <laughs> throwing barrels and he's got to get into the scaffolding to get to get the gorilla out of the um <laughs> to get the gorilla out of the sewage <laughs> What do you think about that intro so far? Well, how did the gorilla get up to the scaffold in the first place? We don't place? know. It's, it's something. How's he, how did he get there? Because that was Mario's first game, so it would be a throwback to Mario's first game. Well, here's my theory. I think the gorilla escaped the New York City Zoo, went down that enormous manhole, and then started running around in the sewers, and then finally... Oh, he, busting pipes. Yeah, he busted pipes, and then found a scaffold, started climbing up and going... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Busted pipes. And maybe that's where, like, maybe Mario accidentally stumbles upon something down there. Like, uh, he sees something, but he kind of just, he kind of rubs it off at first. And, uh, but that, it later, it later shows that down there in the sewage, there's like a, um, like, there's like a city under the city. Like there's a giant city under the city connected by the pipes, the piping, and that's where Bowser rules. Like a mutated, like uh, he's like basically what's what are those turtle things? Koopas. Are oh the, the turtles are Koopas? Koopa Troopas is what they call them. So Koopa Troopas. What if Bowser is like a mutated Koopa Troopa, and he's like this big? Well, no, Bowser's a crocodile, isn't he? What is Bowser? He's a turtle. I think he's supposed to be half turtle, half croc. So maybe he is a mute. Maybe he somehow mutated uh, turtle croc. Is there like a is there a crocodile characters in Mario? Uh, I do not think so. I mean, you got turtles and then you got Bowser. I wonder if there's a crocodile character. I can't remember. I, I've seen a croc. I've seen a crocodile character, but I don't know if he's a part of the Mario universe. You know, I that big crocodile king, croc king. I don't know what I don't know what game he is in. Donkey Kong Country, you're talking about K. Rule. Oh look, K. Rule! K. Rule can make an appearance since Donkey Kong made an appearance. That'd be smart. Smart thinking. So uh so K. Rule's down there helping Bowser. 
um, or something like that. Maybe maybe K Rule. Maybe maybe K Rule is king of the underground, and Bowser's just like bosses him around, bosses the king around for whatever reason. Anyways, so Mario's hanging out, and then Luigi gets out of prison, and because uh, Lu- Luigi was in jail, and he gets out of prison, and he he's like. And Mario's like, come work for me. We be the Mario Brothers. Woo hoo hoo. And then, um, <laughs> and then, uh, I guess they, they, maybe they chase some Goombas robbing a bank for whatever reason. And they chase them down to the pipes, the sewage system. And, uh, and, uh, and they discover this whole city and the Princess Peach. Maybe Princess Peach is like, it's like a princess Diana, like a real princess. And like she was kidnapped and taken down to this uh, city. I mean, there's like a cloud city. Is there a cloud city in Mario? Like a city in the clouds? Mm, well, maybe when you go up the vine and start collecting coins up in the clouds. See, maybe, maybe Princess Peach is like in a cloud city somewhere. And she was kidnapped and brought down to the, to the sewage to the sewage where the bad guys are. And you can have all this weird stuff about about wealth and equality or whatever and <laughs> I don't know all the all the weird social justice things that uh movies have to throw in these days. And uh <laughs> and uh but I want to You know what sucks though? I I want to have a Mario Kart scene in it, but jumping into a go-kart would be so cheesy in real life that I can't I can't even begin to believe it. So I don't know, but I want I want them to jump into something like getting like maybe they don't have to be go karts. Maybe they can be like those weird mini dragsters, like those not not the, not the long ones because like those small like the mini drag racers. And uh, but how, do they do they throw banana peels at people? <laughs> do they throw banana peels? Either banana peels or turtle shells, maybe even some. Uh... Lightning, like in the. Super but how Mario would they movie. do? But how would they? I, I'm trying to think about a way to make it believable in the movie. Like how would how would it work? Maybe the maybe it's like a weird game, like a weird game they find down in the sewage, and maybe they see that um, Donkey Kong. Maybe they see that Donkey Kong is. Uh, maybe Donkey Kong is sitting in. Sinient? Sinient? Maybe he maybe the ape in the beginning can talk and stuff or does Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong talks? No? Well in the cartoon back in the mid nineties he did, but he either either grunts like a typical gorilla or starts making noises like <laughs> <laughs> So maybe I don't know. I just can't may I want him to drive, but maybe he can't drive. Maybe maybe Donkey Kong has to be left out of the of it, but I just want—I want Luigi to do the mean mug. I want all the—I uh, <laughs> want him to do the mean mug when he hits somebody, when he passes people on the go on the, on the cart or whatever on the race uh, strip. <sighs> Mario, Mario, it's just hard, man. That's like—I mean, it's a—it's a hard thing to adapt. You know, Mario is such a wacky. Like most things, most most early video games are hard to adapt. I think it's weird they're trying to adapt um, Sonic, to be honest. Sonic seems like a weird thing to adapt into a half live action because there's no people. There's no people in Sonic to begin with. Like they, why, don't, why don't they just make it a like a Lion King animated, like where it's like it looks real, but it's not. You know, they should have done that for Sonic. I don't understand why they have live action. Ah, uh, no, Dr. Robotnik's a person, but he's the only person. He's the only person there. Why is that? I don't, like, why is that he the only person in the in the Sonic franchise? Well, you know how them uh, how them people in Japan operate. They like to base a lot of video games off of animals rather than people. And uh, Sonic Team wanted to uh, wanted to pioneer something that wasn't often seen in the uh, genre of platform games back at the time. But they figured, why not have a hedgehog use their quills to hurt a human, which wouldn't in real life hurt that badly. I mean, their <laughs> quills their quills can sting, don't get me wrong, but 
When do you ever see a real-life hedgehog jump and hit somebody with their quills? I mean, that's impossible in real life. So how would you make a movie out of that? If there's no, if you do not want to suspend your uh, disbelief for a minute or two. And that was how Sonic the Hedgehog was created. Because they wanted to suspend people. They wanted to suspend people's disbelief about realism in video games. I guess. Oh, man. Stressful. I wish, I wish uh, people were smarter to make movies. I wish we had a Mario movie that was awesome. Not the one that you love, Edray. <laughs> no, you, that's your favorite movie of all time. Uh, John, I don't know. I, John Leguizamo is cool. He was cool in it. He was in Spawn. John Leguizamo. I wish we could interview John Leguizamo. That'd be fun. Uh, so any anything any changes you'd make to my uh, my Mario movie, Ed Ray, or what would you add to my Mario movie? Figure out where the princess came from, how she became a princess, and uh, how to get her back in her uh, realm or whatever. That's almost too much backstory. You'd have to make this a TV show. Well, there's just a whole lot of explaining that's impossible to do in one episode. You mean one? You mean one movie? But yeah. One movie, one episode doesn't matter what medium. Well, it does because if it's one episode, you can do multiple episodes and you explain it all. But one movie, you gotta like, you gotta cut some stuff. You can't have backstory for every single character. Some people just, she just has to be a princess, up in the sky or something. Well, there has to be a reason Where's her why. Where's castle at? I'd I'd like to know that too. But there's got to be a reason why she is a princess in the beginning. And why does Bowser keep wanting to kidnap her to marry her? Well, yeah, because that would give him power. Over what? It would give him power over the world. Princess Peach is princess of the world? Either princess of the world or princess of whatever. I mean, there's power in something. No. Princess, P- princess Peach isn't even ever around. How is she a princess even? Is there a king already? That's something we'd all like to know. Is Mario... Maybe Mario is a king plumber. Maybe he's a maybe he's a king, but he like wants to stay uh, rooted to um, American uh, to values or whatever, and so he and so he goes and does plumbing work to be a part of the um, the squires, <laughs> the, whatever the, the the peasants. He goes to be a part of the peasants, so he doesn't he does he does their plumbing. I'm your king, but I'll do your plumbing. Ladies and gentlemen, this would confuse even Benito Mussolini if he were alive. <laughs> Oh man, uh, I don't know, Edray. Uh, we're getting to the end of the episode. I I I wanted to go on. I was hoping that we would, that you would have a uh, your own pitch and I'd have my own pitch, and then we we're gonna have um Eamon, uh say whose was the best, whose was the best pitch. But I mean, what do you think? Join. Uh, hey. Be sure to join our Facebook group at Opinions and Beer and let me know what you think about my Mario movie pitch. Let me know if you'd watch my Mario movie in theaters. Hell, contact the directors in, in studios and tell them about my Mario pitch, that I have a Mario pitch, that I want to pitch to them. Tell them now, or forever hold your peace. Because that is just my... I think it's a pretty good... I think it's a pretty good idea. And I think this cappuccino stout... It's pretty good itself. But that's that's just my opinion. And that's fine. Because all we've got here are opinions and beer. We are opinions and beer.